Hey YouTube, Gadget Dad here, working on finishing out my uh, build, my SBR build, short barrel rifle. Again, this is inspired by the Spikes Tactical uh, Pipe Hitters Union. So go check that out on their site. Um, again, it, it's a it's a cool looking short barrel rifle. Um, definitely think about buying it, unless you're really into building guns. Uh, one of the major reasons I, I just built my own was I already had this lower registered as an SBR, so uh, would have had to wait a long time to purchase one of theirs and get it registered and all that stuff. So that was a good reason for me to build this. Plus, I like building guns. It gives me something to do. It gets me out of the house. Um, so I just like to do that. But if you're not that person and don't like to do that and don't have a lower registered, then uh, go check it out on their website. Uh, pretty cool. There's a few modifications. I built this lower out already, uh, and I, I'm going to separate that into a part one so look at the part one lower build out of this Pipe Hitter Union's SBR. Um, only major kind of modification to the lower that I, I would say is different from theirs is the trigger. I swapped out a Geisley trigger I had from a different uh, rifle, uh, my three gun rifle that I'm upgrading that trigger uh, to the Geisley three gun super dynamic. And then also, I think another thing I noticed that was different is the safety uh, is a little different. This is the one that comes in their enhanced lower kit. Um, but the one, if you notice on the website, this is, I, I believe they're like spikes, I don't know, $60 safety, uh, the one they have on their Piper Center Union, but you probably wouldn't notice that anyway. So that's the lower. Go check out that video uh, for how to build out the lower. That's where a lot of the work is. So I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to talk about the parts for the upper. So obviously we have uh, the upper receiver and this is a spikes upper receiver um, I didn't see I probably would have bought it but I would I didn't see the one that comes without the forward assist uh, I never use the forward assist I don't even think those they're they're really all that useful anymore so um, I, I'd like to see them come back with their upper without a forward assist I saw they had a billeted upper uh, I don't know if it has it or not um, but that would be neat. But anyway, this is the generic Spikes Upper. And then we have the, let's go to the barrel. We have their eight inch barrel. I think it's eight and something inch barrel, uh, one and seven twist. So you gotta have a barrel. And then the forend, uh, this is their nine inch forend. And again, if you kind of look at the, that, um, the picture of the website of the Pipe Hitters Union, this forend does come out, uh, you know, obviously about an inch past the barrel. And then the Barking Spider uh, muzzle brake. So that's gonna come out about two to three inches. So a little bit of this is gonna be sticking out of the tip. Uh, that's what I expect. All right, we gotta have that. And it does come with a, a different little head attachment. Uh, if you like something a little more aggressive, I haven't figured, I haven't decided on that yet. Then we have uh, obviously the clamp. I don't know what the official name for this is, but this is what holds the barrel to the the upper, and then also attaches to the forend and the screws to do so. Uh, those come with uh, with the forend. This is separate barrel. I, I bought all these pieces separately. The bolt and bolt carrier group, I'm swapping this out. So this is what I was running in my three gun. So I upgraded to a JP enhanced super light three gun um, kind of competition bolt and bolt carrier. So this is an excellent mil spec um, kind of combat combat bolt and bolt carrier. Uh, so it made sense to just put this into this gun. So that's that from BCM. Uh, like, likewise, a Voltaire uh, BCM gunfighter charging handle. Again, this was swapped out for my other three gun. I bought a different charging handle, an oversized charging handle, because again, you're kind of charging sometimes with multiple hands based on stages and direction. We got a pistol length gas tube going that way and an adjustable, this is the Spikes adjustable gas block. So this is pretty important. Um, you know, there you run into some different reliability issues when you go into a smaller barrel um, so the barking spider is supposed to help increase back pressure down the barrel, which obviously pushes more gas through the gas block and through the gas tube. But this also allows you to help control how much gas is getting 
down that. The other big benefit of having this on the gun is if you ever decide to, to uh, run a silencer with it, it's very helpful to adjust uh, gas pressure um, down um, to send the bolt back. So these are the pieces for the upper. The upper actually, as long as everything fits together, uh, should be a lot faster than the lower in my experience. It kind of goes together better. Um, so as I did with the lower, I'm really gonna just talk through the steps in order that I'm doing them in. I'm not gonna record every twist because um, that gets really boring quick. And then I'll kind of come back on. You'll see me come back on and just talk through anything I kind of learned or tips or tricks because uh, this is the second, second rifle I'm building. And uh, I feel like that's probably most helpful and useful. Uh, how I learned a lot of this is by watching um, Scooches, and I'll, I'll add a link to the comments, uh, Scooches upper and lower build. So that's if you want to watch someone actually turn the screws and do every part of it. Uh, I have a vice, uh, a vice, and I'll also be using this vice block kit to lock in this upper. Um, and that, that allows you to hold it in place while you torque it. Some other tools I'll be using is um, this wrench. So very handy, kind of classic uh, wrench from Wheeler. And this will be what we torque down our our nut here to hold on the barrel and, and the forend. Um, I do like, this is a nice to have here. This is a torque wrench uh, for the, mostly for um, the gas block. So you don't over tighten that and I'll talk through that. Uh, we do need some Loctite. I do like to use Loctite blue on the gas block. Um, those are really the major tools and obviously a vise so that you can torque it down. This is a nice to have, but I would recommend it uh, and not very expensive. I actually got this and this in a kit from Wheeler um, and, and this, this all it all came together. Uh, and this gives you a sense for torque on the barrel nut. I guess that's what it's called. Um, and uh, so read instructions on how much torque uh, you should should be applied uh, for that. There is some fitting and sizing for the spikes uh, with these shims. So read the instructions on that. I, I kind of pre-sized and got the shims ready uh, for that. So it should come together pretty quick and then I'll, I'll be done with it. I'll kind of take you through. I'm going to clear off my workspace and take you through kind of step by step um, in the first steps and then come back on and give tips on things I learned as I'm building this up Okay, first step here is here is to get the barrel on um, This actually looks a lot more straightforward uh, from the BCM 4N that I, I had done uh, It was super tight. You needed grease to get it on there. You had to like thread it on shim it on it was it was um quite the undertaking, probably the longest thing for my first gun. So definitely read the instructions that come with it always. Um, and, and these are pretty straightforward. I, I think this will be a lot more straight, uh, simple. Do take note of where um, these pieces are and kind of fit it and get an idea for how this fits in um, to this, uh, the foreign piece as well. Make sure that's gonna um, pop on pretty easy. So. That comes first. This is the first thing you're gonna do, not the gas block or the other parts. Um, do read the instruction about the shims. I already did that part. Essentially, they want you to get it to about, turning to about in a 10 or 11 o'clock position um, with the shims on before you tighten it and try to get it to 12 o'clock um, where you're really tightening it down and lining up the hole. Obviously, you gotta line up this hole so the gas block can get through into the chamber. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause and do that, do that with my, um, my upper block and put it in the vise, And that way I can, uh, I can get it on there easier. Okay. A little bit of time has passed, uh, since I, I kind of talked about the next step I was working on, which was, um, putting on the barrel nut. Um, and I had some issues and actually ended up doing another step. So I'm going to talk through it. So I was talking about putting this barrel nut on. We had the shims all figured out. And one of the mistakes I made was to assume um, I have this USGI standard. Um, but you'll notice it has two pins. See these one, two pins? And where I got in trouble with that was that um, this really called for a three pin. I thought I could get away with two. So you can see, you can probably see here, hopefully, 
you can see I kind of had some stripping here. So I was not able to torque down this with just the two pins. So that was a mistake. And I thought maybe I had stripped this barrel nut out enough to where I might even actually get a new one. So luckily uh, I was able to get um, and order the Spikes um, wrench specifically for the three pin. Uh, on the website, there is one listed for the AR-10. Do not buy that one. That is not the right size. I, I luckily called Spikes just to make sure. Uh, and this one is not listed. It's for the AR-15. It's the standard wrench that you really need for uh, their um, barrel nut that goes with this end. So do realize that it is a standard USGI 3-pin, but there's not a lot of standard three pins out there. This Wheeler wrench, I couldn't tell online. The new ones, it looked like it might have three pins, but the one I got in its, in its uh, kind of set or kit only has two. So don't use the two pin wrench, that's the key. Um, do get the three pin. It's kind of a bummer because this is another 25 bucks. Uh, one thing that I liked on a BCM, uh, the BCM 4N that I used is it came with the, um, this wrench for free. I mean, it came with it. These are not, this is not a cheap end, So kind of a bummer that doesn't automatically come with one, but here it is. I got it. I was able to torque it down to the right, um, kind of, um, uh, fit. Uh, I think I got it to about 60, 70, um, pounds of torque. And then also got it lined up, uh, because the, gas tube's got to go through it um, perfectly and you want that really lined up. Let me see if I can get it that way. So, um, and then I, I got anxious and went ahead and did the next step. So I didn't pre-talk through that. So the next step really is, you know, you'll have the gas block here. This is the adjustable spikes gas block. Uh, I talked about uh, important to have this on the short barrel just to um, kind of tweak the reliability as well as if you ever put a silencer on there it's nice so really you're gonna be taking this gas block and this gas tube make sure you have it in the right direction you can tell because this tube is gonna be coming up on the pistol up higher and also you can see in the tube there's a hole at the bottom of the tube which the gas is coming up through into the tube and out this way and you're just putting that pin in that little pin really helps to have a punch set Highly, highly, highly recommend that. Um, so you're putting that in first, putting that pin in, make sure it's flush on both sides of the pin. And then you're just sliding the the um, uh, the gas tube and the gas block on. Uh, this barrel's nice because it has a big a stopping point so you know exactly where it needs to go, okay? And then uh, under here, I do use some Loctite, blue Loctite, just a little dab, uh, you don't need a lot, and then um, tighten this down. I think I tightened it to 40, um, and I use this Wheeler wrench so I know exactly what the torque is, and it comes with uh, all the little pieces that fit in here. So that way you get a nice torque on it, you know how much torque you're putting on it. Loctite for sure. Uh, the first gun I built, I did not use Loctite, and they did back out on me and create an issue. Uh, the gun stopped cycling, and that was why. So that's that's where I'm at now. Um, I think I mentioned earlier this block. This came with the kind of standard Wheeler kit, and it fits on top of your upper like this, and then sits into the vise. Uh, absolutely necessary to torque down this barrel nut uh, with the right amount of torque. I, I cannot imagine doing this without that torque. Um, the next step and last step that I'll be working on is putting on um, I mean, not the last step, but for this design, since my end is going to be out past, you probably can see this way, out past the barrel, I'm going to be, I'm going to put on the, um, the muzzle brake first, because obviously you can see it's going to be hard to do that otherwise if I don't do it the other way. So because I have it this way, otherwise if the barrel was out past the end. I put the forend on first, and then I put the muzzle muzzle brake or comp on second. So I'm going to do that first. It does fit over it. 
I kind of tested all those fittings. So we'll be doing um, this comp. The one thing I forgot when I was looking at this, uh, as I was just making sure I had all the parts, was this comp does not come with a crush washer or shims. So you are going to want to make sure to get that uh, unless you don't unless you don't have it. So you don't really want this to just sit on there wherever it sits. You can probably tell if I turn it on there, it'll probably be all right and work just fine. But I'm a little anal um, about a lot of things. See the pinning point kind of sits off to the right. Um, so I I mean I want this pin point to be down at the bottom of the uh, of the gun. Um, so how you do that is you either get a crush washer, but uh, it seems like the research I've done, uh, the preference to get it right is by using shims, washer shims, and Spike's site does have them uh, for about four or five bucks. You get a shim kit right here. And this allows you to put shims on and kind of, you kind of twist this on and off and get the shims, the right size shims on to get it to where it's spinning to this right spot that you want and it's tight and the right torque amount. And I believe that torque amount's about 30 to 40 pounds, but look that up, I might be wrong um, on, on that. So that's basically the next step is to torque this on with the right shims, I'm not gonna make you watch that. Um, and from there, we'll put on the forend and that is pretty much our last step of building, uh, building out the upper. I'll uh, I'll pop back on and let you know what I learned or messed up from that step. All right, our our uh, our muzzle brake is on. Looks awesome. We uh, we did do that in the vise uh, with our upper kind of clamp. Uh, just so you know, this Wheeler tool is pretty cool. So this is the notch that you use for. Uh, muzzle brakes and it's got a half inch drive in here so you're essentially just putting your torque wrench uh, into that slot and then torquing it down. The muzzle brake recommendations um, 30, 30 pounds. I had to go just over 30 pounds to kind of get it even. So you're kind of playing a game with the shims uh, and the shims you have on there with how much torque you're putting on it. You got to go a little over 30 pounds. Again, it's not that precise. This little do that is not like a digital gauge so you're kind of just watching it um, you're kind of playing a game with that and the shims and then how anal you want to be with how perfect you want this lined up um, and then uh, you know I got some scratches I don't know if that's a you know just how it happens I don't know if this is has poor coating if I uh, put too much on it or if that's because of spark I haven't seen that kind of scratching I don't know if you can see that uh, here you see some marks there, but hey, it's a gun. So you f totally forget about all those scratches and dings once you start shooting it So I'm gonna just remind myself of that, but that's on there again um, The the barking spider is kind of cool. You can change out these tips. This is the other tip option That I have that you have on it. I didn't put Loctite on that. I'm just gonna have to kind of watch it um, Sometimes I do sometimes I don't it just depends on on what it is I've seen some people muzzle brake loosen up or come off and it may be because they didn't torque it down properly. They just did it by hand. I'm not sure. So next step here, uh, here we go. We're almost there. Next step for that upper is putting on the hand guard and our upper is complete. Let me just talk through my thoughts here. So this should be straightforward and I say should be um, basically just sliding this on into the grooves. The uh, this this handguard setup and, and the way it gets in is, is pretty straightforward that we're just putting screws in. Uh, I probably will use some Loctite on those screws, just a little, little bit of the blue so it can come out if I need to change something on here. Obviously more important to, because if I ever want to change this forehand, I have to get this off. Um, and then I think so this is something I'm looking at. You know, to be able to adjust the gas block, right, I have to get to it, and it's very hard to get to because this muzzle brake is so honking big to get in there. Um, this one won't fit because it's not the right size, but this is what I use for my other AR in the same, similar configuration. Really handy tool. I'm sad that that doesn't 
fit a uh, little nugget, but it looks like I could get to it that way. Um, or I was thinking that if I had a wrench, I might be able to get into it from this way and get enough turn on it to get a click and be able to click and tweak it that way. Um, because this handguard has these these grooves to be able to do that. So that is something also I'm thinking about. I'm hoping I don't have to buy another one of these, which is like 10, 15, 18 bucks to make adjustments. I don't love them because also your hand's out over the barrel. If you're doing it at the range, people uh, don't like to see that. Uh, I'd rather be able to do it in from the side. So that's pretty much the next step to screw these, screw this in. Basically popping in like that and I'm gonna get some screws in here on each side, the bottom, the sides. So two in the side, two in the bottom, two in the top, and our upper should be done. All right, here it is. Upper is done and on. So the hand guard uh, went on pretty easy. Um, things to note, there's different size screws uh, on this, on the Spikes hand guard, and even the, uh, the little star key on the top screws. So this top screws are the shortest ones. The instructions say put those on first, and then you'll see that these are bigger star keys. And these are longer screws that go two on the bottom, two on the sides. Uh, the instructions do say use light Loctite blue, um, so recommend that. Some other, um, something else that was helpful for this, just for alignment, and this is a kit I got for this second build because it is a huge pain in the butt to try to use a regular hammer and just some odds and ends to get some of these pins and stuff together. So I got this uh, this set, which was so helpful um, in so many ways. And then having a little hammer like this is uh, incredibly helpful. Obviously the brass end um, to do, let's see, where's the brass? Uh, there was a, uh, a brass pin that I used quite a bit more, but having a rubber end just to do some baby taps. So to get these screw holes aligned, um, I had to do some just baby tapping on the fore end this way and then back this way a little bit. To be able to have a hammer like this that you can do those soft taps without worrying about um, you know, scratching up some of the surface is really nice and and it's small so you can get into the sides of some of these places and just do some small small taps on things highly recommend one of these and then obviously um, these pins are, are invaluable as well as I got this too for my second build um, having a block that you can pin things in a good example of this is the gas block you know putting the pin between the gas tube and the gas block um, and having something to lean that stuff against and then the pins the proper pins to hammer that stuff in the first build I did I tried to use with a, a normal hammer um, And then just some weird things as pins. I even used you know I used I used some allen keys to do it and it is hard you miss you scratch things um, Definitely a, a, wor a worthwhile investment the other thing that's nice. I think I talked about earlier is a torque wrench Trying to see where it went. Uh, I had this for my first build, but uh, used it even more on the second build. So having a torque wrench, it comes with all the stuff you normally use. Uh, I've, I've never not had the right um, bit. It has the star bit, has a lot of the hex bits. So I was able to use this on the Spikes uh, handguard installing it. And then, you know, I like to put it, you know, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I like to put it all uh, fairly similar, similar torque. Uh, you can definitely over tighten some of these things so having the torque um, screwdriver really helps you not go too crazy on that the fat wrench um, definitely good investments on these things the fat wrench and then the hammer and um, pin kit so get those but that's it uh, I, I dropped in the bolt I think I told you guys I, I had a BCM bolt uh, that I was using in the in the competition three gun which I had replaced and then uh, dropped in the charging handle I had this charging handle as well the BCM gunfighter along with the bolt from the three gun the charging handle that I believe is on the pipe hitter unions uh, pipe hitter union spikes pipe hitter union gun is the Raptor and again I took that since